going to show you a rig that I use for my day-to-day -day vision. Um, it's not something that, um, you know, I use a choddy or something like that for fishing over chod, but for my general day-to-day -day fishing where I'm going to put a rod out, um, th then this is it. And the reasons why, I'm going to, as I'm going along, I'm going to describe what I'm doing, but also explain why I've got to this point in my fishing to use a rig like this. Basically, I'm starting off with 15 pound IQ fluorocarbon. It's invisible in water, or practically invisible. It's got great knot strength. Um, it's highly abrasion resistant, but also that it's tangle free. Now this rig that I'm going to show you is purely a bottom bait rig. I've tried it with semi-buoyant baits, even with little bits of plastic corn, buoyant plastic corn on the top, and it just doesn't work. Um, you get bites, but for some reason you lose fish. With this rig, you get bites with a bottom bait on, but you don't lose fish. And that's another advantage about it, or if you do lose fish, it's very, very rare that you do. So all what I'm doing is tying a, a loop knot in the bottom of the fluorocarbon, just to start off the hair. It's just going to be a simple knotless knot rig. So just a little loop for putting my hair stop in. And then I'm just taking a little bit of silicon and this is going to sit on the bottom of a curve of a hook. So you just want a couple of mil just to hold the line in position. So I thread that on next and then pull it down towards the towards your hair loop. Then I take the hook. I always seem to use size six curves of this. Even when I'm fishing for smaller fish, I still use the sixes. I seem to go down to eights and again I seem to lose fish. I don't can't explain it. What I'm trying to say is with these kind of setups, when I've had like 15 fish in a day or something like that, you can really work out what's going on with your rigs, you know, and comparatively what a hook hold you get with a size eight or a size six. But for general day-to-day -day fishing, this is what I do. Basically when you thread it on and turn it round, it's sitting the right way up. Now why I've put it on the the silicon on the bend of the hook first of all and done it this way round is because the fluorocarbon is quite thick so pulling that then through the silicon afterwards after you've tied the knotless knot can be quite difficult. So I'm leaving enough space there for a 15 or possibly an 18mm bottom bait. Right with a knotless knot you want to go from back to front so from the back of the hook pointing towards the point and then what I do with this bit here just get your measurement of your bait, hook bait right and then I try to hold on to the whole lot so I've got the fluorocarbon and everything pinched in there because when I tie a knotless knot with this setup I want to pull it down as hard as I can. So I'll probably go about eight or ten turns down and then what I do here is go one or two times curling back up over the knot. And what that does, if you use um, knotless knots regularly, what you tend to find is when you've got a fish in that the, the knot has actually turned during a fight with the pressure on the hook and um, again to stop any kind of abrasion or any kind of problems like that by turning one or two loops back up over your knot that stops it from doing that during a fight and then you know as long as the hooks hook point has stayed sharp which these tend to anyway um, the hooks and the hook link is ready to go again so that really is pretty much it I tie a loop in the other end to go onto the um, safe zone leader. So when I put the bottom bait onto the hair, I tend to pull the silicon down sort of two thirds of the way around the bend. So it's just sitting here on the corner like that. So again, the reason why I've got back to this rig and it is simple, but very, very effective is that the fluorocarbon is invisible, highly abrasion resistant. The little piece of silicon tubing stops any frap ups where the hair sort of spins around the hook bait, um, stops any kind of tangling, catches me loads of fish, very very rarely lose fish and is just a great carp fishing setup. So I'm just putting the bottom bait on. I tend to use these little dumbbell hair stops, I'll show you in just a second, a little bit fiddly. See so yeah, I tend to use the little dumbbells on there. There's no way of that coming off either side. 
And then, because I like using little funnel web bags, the bag hooks onto there nicely, and sometimes I just buffer the little piece of silicon tubing up against the bag. And having it like that, having quite a stiff hair, there's no way of that going around the bag or going around the hook, because that's what tends to happen when I use braid. I tend to have like a, a lost fish or a funny take and I reel it in and, you know, the um, actually something quite interesting from watching some of the underwater stuff and some of the more uh, recent underwater quarter videos, they're talking about rigs that re-cock themselves. So if you ever have a, an aborted take or something, the rig will reset itself and, and it's ready to go again. And, and I think that's one of the things of a great advantage to this type of rig. You've got a stiff hair, stiff invisible line, and if, if you do have a problem out there that the, the rig is ready to go, ready for the next fish, I think problems that you have with braid is because it's quite supple, it has a tendency to tangle or you know get caught in debris and bits like that. So it's like a semi-stiff rig really, an invisible semi-stiff rig.